Hello and welcome back to the course. Today we're talking about NACLs or Network Access Control Lists or Network ACLs as they're also called. This is a type of firewall, so it'll be very interesting to see how it works. Let's dive straight into it. Uh, here we've got our VPC and we will have two subnets, a private and a public. And inside the public subnet, we will have an EC2 instance, which very much wants to connect to the public internet. So how does a network ACL filter the traffic? Well, one important thing to remember is that a network ACL is a subnet level firewall. So it's applied at the boundary of a subnet. And unlike a security group, it cannot be assigned to a resource. You cannot attach it to your EC2 instance. You can only attach it to the whole subnet and it'll protect everything uh, inside that subnet from traffic that crosses the subnet boundary. So if traffic is stays inside the subnet, then the network ACL will not apply. But as soon as traffic crosses the boundary, whether in or out, the network ACL will apply. So in this case, if the internet is trying to access our EC2 instance or vice versa, the network ACL will um, check that traffic and make sure it's allowed. And of course, we can see here on the image, we've got our internet gateway at the top. Now, Imagine we have another EC2 instance in our private subnet and it wants to communicate with our first EC2 instance. Well, in this case, um, the network ACL of that subnet will also come into play. It will check the traffic. Uh, if it's allowed, it will keep going, go through into the other network ACL. Uh, and then if it's also allowed, then we'll go to the EC2 instance. So the critical thing to remember here is that network ACLs work at subnet level. However, something to keep in mind is that network ACLs are simply lists. They look like this. So every network ACL has two lists, a list for inbound rules and a list for outbound rules. And this one is for inbound rules. Now, network ACLs are applied at subnet level, but they're created at the regional level. So you create them at the regional level, and then you choose which network ACLs will be assigned to which subnets. And every single subnet has to be associated with exactly one network ACL, not more, not less. However, note that one network ACL can be associated with multiple subnets. So back to the network ACL at the bottom, as you can see, it's got some rules. The rules are applied in ascending order based on rule number. So um, the network ACL for this uh, specific traffic will check all the rules. Once it finds a match in terms of uh, the protocol, the type, port range, the source, uh, and so on, once it finds a match, then it will apply that rule and just that rule, not it will not look for any other rules. So that again, its function is different to a security group here, it just applies the one rule that matches. If no rule matches, then the last rule, the star rule will apply and it'll be the traffic will be denied. So here we see an example of a deny of an individual IP address. It might be a malicious IP address that you know is trying to abuse your account or your services. And here we see a deny of a whole network, a whole range of IP addresses. And here we have a catch-all and a catch-all is basically a rule that catches all IP addresses. So if no other rules above it were applied, then this rule will be used before the final star rule will be used to deny. So this catch-all ensures that everything is allowed that wasn't denied before, uh, but if we remove it, then everything will be denied. So a couple of final things to mention is that network ACLs do not apply to traffic that does not cross the boundary of the subnet. Uh, network ACLs are a stateless firewall, as we discussed in the previous tutorial, and network ACLs, as we can see, can contain explicit denies. All right, so that's network ACLs. We'll see them more throughout the course. And here's a quick summary of what we discussed. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, enjoy the cloud.